Hi! In this video we're using Substance 3D Designer to make awesome mandala patterns. Let's go over the keynotes and parameters we'll use first. The shape node is often the starting point of a node setup or more complex shape. It's perfect for a huge variation of base shapes. Pattern is the main parameter that lets you choose your base shape. The pattern specific parameter adjusts one specific attribute for some of the shapes. For example, the length of a capsule shape. Splatter Circular is a powerful node to make regular or random circular patterns. With Ring Amount, you adjust the amount of rings for your pattern. Radius lets you adjust the distance of rings to the center of the pattern. Scale by Ring Number is used to increase or decrease the scale for rings closer to the center. The Gradient Dynamic node is a great node to remap colors from a grayscale input into a new gradient ramp. This really helps for more complex gradients. With the gradient input position, you offset the area which is used as gradient ramp. Let's build this basic setup together and learn how to use the gradient dynamic to make amazing mandala patterns. For this quick tip example, we start with the shape node. As shape, we use the paraboloid pattern because it has a nice transition from black to white. Experimenting with different shapes might give you other interesting results. Now we connect it to a levels node to adjust the gradient. You can work with the small handles or click on the value button to type in precise values. We adjust the level in mid slider to remap the mid range values more towards white. We'll use the splatter circular node to do the base of our pattern. To move the wire into the upper input, hold down the shift key and drag and drop it into the upper input. We change the pattern to image input to use our shape as input. Increasing the pattern amount gives us more circular shapes. A higher ring amount results in more rings towards the center. To move the rings away from the center, we simply adjust the radius parameter. Let's increase the scale by ring number to scale the shapes based on the ring number. Because we want the center shapes to be smaller, we invert the ring number. Now we offset the rings with the ring rotation offset slider. Finally, we'll use the luminance by ring number to darken the outer rings. Let's connect the output into the grayscale input of a gradient dynamic node. As gradient input, we use a tile generator node to have more control. We'll adjust the x and y amount to have a vertical line pattern. Now we use square as pattern and activate the checker mask to adjust the colors. Let's connect it to the gradient input of the gradient dynamic node to let the magic happen. To have more control over areas with single pixels, we use a blur HQ grayscale node to blur it slightly followed by a threshold node to turn the soft grayscale shape into a hard white mask. Here's our final base result of the setup we did before. You can save this setup and use it in another project or make a custom node out of it. This will speed up your workflow a lot. Let's dive into some variations of this tip. Another great shape to use is the crescent. It results in a more rounded pattern. With the pattern specific slider we can adjust the pattern if we want. To bring in some random colors, I often use the anisotropic noise node because it has some smooth transitions. I adjusted the x and y amount to simplify it a bit more and rotated it 90 degrees. I colorized the pattern with the gradient map node. A HSL node can be helpful for fast color tweaks. I started with a simple disk shape. For the heart deformation, I used the directional warp node. I adjusted the angle and used the gradient linear tree gradient as intensity input. To bring it back to the center, I used the transformation to the node. The non uniform blur node is a great node to make a smooth heat map of any shape. Use samples and plates to adjust how smooth the shape will be. To adjust the rotation of the heart, I use the pattern rotation parameter in the splatter circular node. By playing with the x amount of the tile generator node, you quickly get a huge variation of nice looking patterns. For a symmetrical result, the mirror grayscale node is very useful. 
For more random results, I used the different random parameters of the splatter circular node. Radius random, angle random, size x and y random, scale random, pattern rotation random, and ring rotation random are just some of them. If you want to learn more, you can download and open the graphs shown in the video. Thanks for watching and we would love to hear your thoughts, ideas and suggestions for future quick tips. So let us know them in the comments. See you in the next quick tip episode.